I said to them, have you ever skied? None of them had. I said, well, don't try it until we, we get the cameras out. We put three cameras on them, and I said, now learn how to ski. There's a hill, do it. And we just filmed everything that, that happened, and it all happened for real. And if something was particularly good, we would just slightly embellish it. We took all the material back, handed it to John Victor Smith, who was the editor, and said, you look at it fresh and, and put it together which, in, in whichever way you want. And his first cut, we finally changed no more than three shots. The only thing I added was we had some telegraph wires, which were ugly. And, and I, I thought, well, we can't get rid of them, because this was before an, any electronic means of painting something out. So uh, we, uh, we just came up with the idea of, of uh, putting the notes from the song on it. Um, and I think that there were two other suggestions. But other than that, the film just fell into place. It was one of those wonderful sequences that it almost it cut itself. It's a great thing seeing all of you fellows together again. Some records that uh, you will be uh, including in the new film. Can you yes. reveal them to us? I can't. You can. I'd like to. Uh, how many songs can you tell us that will be in the film? I reckon it'll be about six or seven. Six or seven. George Harrison right now. George, any songs in the future that are coming up that you're personally going to be featured on the vocal? Uh, well, just recently, just before we come out here, we recorded uh, a few, you know, quite a lot of songs for the film, about six or seven, actually, yeah. And, uh, and I am singing on some of them, but as yet, we don't know what's going to be in the film and what's going to be on the LP or any of the How are you going to be able to work them? I, I'm sure that y'all have probably already seen the script. Uh, it's, it's very tricky, but it works, I think. The, the songs were videos. You know, because I do believe that uh, about uh, Richard Lester, that he was, uh, in a sense, initiated the video filming song technique, you know, in those movies that a lot of people copied later on. When I started pop videos in uh, the late 70s, the, the images that were floating around my head were from sort of Beatles' look and the, the jump frames that are in help where you, you know, pop people around the frame. We did all that, um, and really, I suppose that was a good mirror of what had gone before. With the musical numbers, again, we carried on this, the principle of, that we started with Hard Day's Night, that some of the numbers would be them performing for reasons that where they had to perform, whether in a studio, or even if that studio was taken out of doors and put onto Salisbury Plain for plot reasons. That was a performance. Then there were songs which they did where their images were placed next to the music. Maybe one of them would be performing live and the rest were acting it out. And I gather that what happened was a lot of the time the track would only appear just the day before filming and that explains a lot of things because I'm sure Dick Lester who could do things uh, on the fly and the Beatles, who would do things on the fly, became a lethal kind of combination of being creative without being literal. The fact that it released a kind of filmmaking to become available for a lot of pop music and how music is put on the screen ended at the end of Help. Sometime afterwards, I was sent a parchment scroll from MTV declaring that I was the father of MTV. And, and as I think it's an old line of mine, but probably worth repeating, is that I immediately cabled back and, and demanded a blood test. <laughs>